Alright guys, welcome to another requested video. Um, Tim G requested a week ago, I'm sorry for that delay, um, how to build a rope in Box 2D. So there is the rope joint and we can use that to, well, get realistic kind of ropes, but these ropes are just joints and not visible. So we cannot touch them, we cannot put images on them that easily. And yeah, how to create a rope um, that uses bodies. So we want to get something like this. This is a rope and as you can see um, it's made out of bodies. So it can touch itself, it can touch the ground. Um, yeah, it's just like any other physical object. So this um, is, well, a bunch of bodies obviously and they're connected to each other using revolute joints. There are many ways to uh, create ropes but revolute joints are one of the common ways actually. Um, y there are also ways to uh, use rope joints, distance joints, uh, any kind of joints basically. Um, so yeah, we are just going to use revolute joints in this video. Um, okay, so let's get into the code and yeah, understand this. <laughs> so, um, right here I just got a normal box to the screen. Um, I have the camera viewport resizing stuff and resize and uh, render and render, dispose and hide and dispose and dispose, just all normal. We just have the world, the box to D renderer and an orthographic camera. I create the world, I create the other stuff and that's it. Um, here I create the ground, just an edge shape that's static. Um, and this mouse joint stuff here um, is from libgx utils so that I can move the, the the rope around. But that's not what this tutorial is about so we'll just ignore that. Um, also this here is also from libgx utils. Um, for to, to create this dem uh, demonstration rope, but we don't need this anymore, so let's get rid of it. Okay, so now we want to create our own rope. At first, let's see what we got right now to make sure that we really don't cheat. And yes, we don't got anything. Great. Um, okay, so to create our own rope, let's just move that into a function because that's easier. Uh, and just yeah makes more sense so let's say we have this function called create a rope and we'll actually make this private and return it an array of bodies the segment bodies that uh, the rope will use now this is going to take a few parameters actually just one <laughs> and that's the length of the rope so how many segment bodies should be used then let's call this up here create rope with like, let's start with five. Okay, so inside of here we need this body array to return obviously, so let's just go ahead and create it. It's gonna be called segments. And it's gonna be a new array of bodies uh, of the size of, well, the length that we pass in. So if we want five bodies, we obviously need a body array that has like a space for five bodies. Um, then we're just going to return this so Eclipse is happy and now let's actually create this thing. So first we need a body dev to actually be able to create our bodies. I'm just going to call that body dev equals a new body dev. Then I probably want to set that to um, a dynamic body. Yep, Eclipse is awesome. And um, I'm gonna use a polygon shape. And just set that to something. So let's say we have float um, width and height. I'm just going to set width to one and height, oh no, not to one, that's pretty big rope. No big, no rope is one meter wide, uh, let's just say dot 5f and that's still big but anyway it's just a demonstration um, the height is going to be 1 then and then I'm going to set the shape as a box to width and height we have to divide by 2 here because that's how the set as box method works it takes the half width and half height I probably say that every time we use this method but anyway um, now the only thing left is to actually create these segments. So let's put this into a for loop. And we'll just iterate over all these empty slots of segments. 
and well put a new rope in so uh, a new segment in um, segments at the index is going to be a new body so world to create body using the body Jeff from up there and then we want to create a fixture on this and I don't have a fixture def because I don't care so I'm just going to use the shape and a density of 2 works well enough um, this already works but it's not really quite what we wanted so let's restart this and see what we get well we get these bodies here but uh, all we did now was create 5 bodies that's not a rope yet um, we still have to connect them to each other using joints and like I said we want to use revolute joints for that so let's create a new revolute joint definition call it joint definition or joint def equals a new revolute joint def import and we're just going to set yeah what are we gonna do ah, nothing for now uh, we're just going to well, create all these revolute joints in another for loop. So int i is 0, i is smaller than joints.length and i++. Plus plus. But joints doesn't exist yet, so let's just go ahead and create it. Revolute joint array called joints is going to be a new revolute joint array of length but actually of length minus one because um, picture these segments in your head one after another um, we need a, um, a, a joint for each connection between two seg segments so we use one joint for each segment but the last one doesn't need any connection to the next one because there is no next one so we need one joint less than we have segments uh, well then let's just yeah, create those segments. At first, um, joint def dot body a is going to be segments of i, and joint def dot body b is going to be segments of i plus one. So yeah, the next body. We don't have to worry about um, um, an exception here because segments is one bigger than joints and we iterate over joints here so this works out just fine for the last slot in this array um, then we probably want to set joints at i to world dot create joint joint definition and this returns a normal um, joint so we have to cast this to a revolute joint and that's almost it. Let's see what we get. Well, we have all these bodies, we have uh, all the revolute joints, but they are connected to each other all in the same place. And just to refresh your memory, a revolute joint is like a nail. It connects two things um, on one position, like yeah, like you hammer a nail through them. And now we did this in the center of all these bodies here. And well, that's what we get. We get a bunch of bodies all stuck together and yeah, trying to get away from there because, well, there can't be two bodies at the same position. That's why it behaves so weird. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to set the joint definitions local enter A and local enter B. And of that we want to set um, the Y because it, it's zero, 0, as you can see, because it's all in the center. And the Y of that is going to be the um, width of the segments here, uh, not the width of course, the height of the segments here, but minus. So local enter A is the local enter for body A, and body A is defined right here. It's the first segment of these two segments that are going to be connected. And uh, by setting this to minus height, um, we, uh, like imagine the, the body A is above body B and by setting it to minus side we set it to the bottom of the body and then if we set joint def local enter B which is the body under body A dot Y to height we set it to the top of the lower body so they are basically like one over the other 
and connected to each other in the same spot. I think you can picture that, I hope you can. And well, it works. Kind of. Doesn't that look absolutely great? Uh, not really. Um, <laughs> let's see, we, I think we have to divide this by two. Exactly. Because uh, we go from, we start from the middle of those uh, things here. We can see it on the line. We start from the middle. We start from right here and then we go minus height divided by two to the bottom. And starting from here we go height divided by two up. And they meet both in this spot right here. Okay, so there we go. We have a rope. And yeah, that's that's basically it. That's how to create a rope. Um, now the problem with ropes is um, if I took this and I... Actually, I have a test for this. Uh, let me see. Where is it? Rope test. All right. So uh, what you see right here is basically the same thing. Those are also segments connected to each other via um, revolute joints. But you can also see those lines there. And those lines are rope joints again, which make sure that um, this bottom circle here doesn't pull them out uh pull them away from each other too f uh, too yeah too far away so <laughs> if if we apply too much of a force um the rope might just break and these rope joints just make sure that if that happens they're going to pull back the circle and we have a fully intact rope again um this is not guaranteed to work um but well there is no guarantee for ropes to always be stable in box 2d that's the problem with ropes in box 2d um but yeah we can use a bunch of tricks Actually, let's make this rope a little bit more stable. Let's have a look at what we have right now and decide what we're going to use to yeah, make it a little bit more stable. So we have this and we don't see the problem right now, but I think if I do it hard enough... No, not yet. I'm not able to do it. Um, let's say we create a longer rope of like 20 segments and I think we'll see the problem then. So we have 20 segments and if I do this, do you see that? It, yeah, it kind of dissembles. The um, joints are getting too, pu uh, too uh, pulled too far from each other, and well, that kills the revolute joints kind of, and they'll only get back um, to being functional when they, yeah, get back it, um, nearer to each other, closer to each other. So we need something that pulls them back to each other um, when they get yeah too far away from each other. I think I'm repeating myself here, so let's just get started. So what do we want to do? Um, we want to create an additional joint for each connection between two segments. So for each revolute joint that we have, we want to have another, let's say, a rope joint um, to yeah to kind of watch out um, if if the joints get uh, if the two bodies here get too far from each other. The rope joint is going to pull them back together, which kind of repairs the revolute joint. Um, okay, so for this we obviously need another array. Call we we, do we actually don't need these arrays here, but I'm just going to I'm just creating them so we can do stuff with them later if you want to. Um, so this is an uh, rope joint array called rope joints equals new rope joint array also of length minus one. We should probably import the class. And yeah, let's do this in another for loop. We could also do it in the same for loop, but if we do it in another one, we just have everything so nicely separated from each other, um, from, from everything else. Um, at first though, we need a rope joint definition. So let's call it let's rope joint def equals new rope joint def. And now we, what we want to do is basically the same as this. We could almost copy it. Um, at first, rope joint def dot local enter a. We're going to say, yeah, let's just see what happens <laughs> because I know what happens. Local enter a dot y is going to be minus side divided by two because it's at the same position as on the revolute joint. Rope joint def dot local enter b dot y equals height divided by two into this spot between those bodies um, on their edges, and we have to set the rope joint def dot max length because right now it's zero, which is kind of impossible um, to height. 
because well, height divided by two plus height divided by two is height, <laughs> obviously. Um, yeah, the centers of two bodies should always be um, have a, have always a max maximum distance of one body. Okay, so let's create the next rope joint and I uh, the the next loop. I can't talk today. I'm sorry. I'm a little bit sick. Um, I smaller than rope joints dot length and add one to y. Okay, so now we want to do basically the same. Rope joint def dot body a is going to be segments i. Rope joint def dot body b is going to be i plus one and yeah let's just create it so rope joints at the index that we are currently at is world dot create joint rope joint def and we have to cast this to a rope joint it's looking exactly as up here now if we do this it already well it kind of works but it looks weird as heck and it's definitely not what we want at first let's reduce this down to five again so we actually see what's going on and resume this application um, okay so there we go doesn't that look absolutely great uh, yeah I know it doesn't really um, well and that is simply because the defaults for the rope joint dev um, local edges are different from the defaults of the revolute joint dev um, the defaults of the revolute joint devs are 0 0 and here they are um, 0 1 we can actually see this here minus 1 0 and 1 0 and we just want that to be 0 so let's say instead of just setting setting the y we use the set method to say 0 minus height divided by 2 and set 0 height divided by 2 and using this we get a pretty fine rope that we ex it's actually the exact same we had before but um, let's get 20 bodies again just like we did before and let's see if this is a little bit more stable, at least a little bit. Oh yeah, I'd actually see... Well... Um, okay, well, you <laughs> yeah, that's the problem with joints in BoxoD. We are always able to destroy them, because BoxoD uses an iterator solver, um, which is good for performance, but not always the best for the result. Um, but I think it's already a bit more stable than previously, as you can see. And yeah, that's great. So you can use even more joints, like you, you could use... <laughs> Um, a bit more rope joints to connect the segments to the first and last segment and whatever, I don't know. Uh, you could basically do anything. There are many ways to make this more stable. Um, but this is one of the most common. Uh, okay, you, you, could, uh, you could even go ahead and do this manually by setting the position back uh, to where it previously was. Uh, crazy stuff. Uh, yeah, but anyway. This is how the base. Th those are the basics of creating joints in Box 2D. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, and also, I hope I'll see you in the next video. Um, until then, have a great time programming and doing awesome stuff and being awesome and whatnot. Um, so yeah, see you next time.